Well, good evening and praise the Lord. Glad to be back in our midweek Bible study and prayer. Well, I guess we will pray today since I said that, but normally we do a uh, prayer time after our Wednesday evening Bible study. Um, thank God for those of you who are tuning in and for those who have come out to be a part of our audience on today. Uh, we want to continue our discussion on miracles from the Old Testament. Our lesson tonight will be uh, centered around the miracle of spiritual insight. If you recall the last time we met, uh, we talked about um, Elijah and uh, how he provided for the Shumanite woman, which was one of uh, the many miracles that he performed. Elijah, of course, was a very notable prophet, uh, historic to some extent, because if you remember on the Mount of Transfiguration, when Jesus went up to be transfigured, that was Moses who represented the law and Elijah who represented the prophet who were on the mount, appeared on the mount with him. So Elijah's a very notable prophet. But you remember also that Elijah had a, well, an understudy or a protege or a mentee someone who was very close to who studied prophecy under him. And that person was Elisha. So we're, we're talking about two different men now. Elijah on last week, last time we met. And this week we're going to 2 Kings chapter 6 and we're going to talk about Elisha who was a mentee or uh, a protege, an understudy, or a disciple, if you will. He followed the prophet Elijah. You remember also that when God told Elijah that he was going to be called away, that is, he wouldn't see death. Elijah was such a profound prophet. He was so anointed. Uh, he had such an intimate relationship with the Lord that God allowed him to be taken up, not to see death. And Elisha, as he followed Elijah in his last moments on earth, Elijah said to Elisha, what can I do for you before I leave? And Elisha said to him, I want a double portion of whatever you got. I want a double portion of your spirit. You remember that from uh, previous Bible studies in Sunday school. So Elijah told him, if you see me when I'm taken up, then you can have a double portion of my spirit. Elijah, as a result, will because he did receive the double portion, will perform twice as many miracles. We're talking about miracles. The, the, the central theme is miracles. So Elisha will perform, because he had a double portion, he will perform twice as many miracles as Elijah. Uh, Bible history says that Elijah performed in his uh, during the time of his ministry, he performed 14 notable miracles. So if Elijah performed 14 notable, notable miracles, how many did, if, if Elijah performed twice as many because he had a double portion, how many did he perform? How many? 28. 28. Very good. That's my math folks back there. 28, so Elijah, not known as a prophet greater than his father or his mentor, but 
because he had a double portion of his spirit, he performed twice as many miracles. So Bible history says that Elisha performed 28 miracles as opposed to Elijah's 14. So we're talking about, because Elijah has been called up. He's been called up and taken into glory with chariots and angels, chariots of fire and angels. Say so he was taken up in a whirlwind, which was in itself a miracle. Uh, so we're talking about Elisha, and of course, Elijah, just as Elijah had Elisha as his understudy, then Elijah has a servant, an unnamed servant in our lesson tonight, but he has a servant as well. So the prophets usually had someone who walked with them, who trained under them. They formed what was called a school of prophets. And normally the father, the head prophet, would have several students or prophets who sit at their feet and who studied out under them. So Elijah does have one servant that is mentioned in our lesson tonight. He is an unnamed servant. Uh, he did have a servant whose name was Gehazi, but history says this is not Gehazi. This is another of, of his students. So what I want to talk about tonight is spiritual insight. It's not a word that is commonly used in traditional scripture. And, and when I say traditional, I'm talking about what we normally read, which is the King James Version. King James or New King James. You probably won't see this term insight or spiritual insight. What you will normally see is revelation. It's basically the same thing. Um, being able or uh, having something that is going on in the spirit realm revealed to you in the earthly realm. It is, um, it is seeing the invisible. It's hearing the inaudible. It's knowing the unknown. But you know it by way of the spirit. The spirit of God reveals, there's that word again, reveals to you what's going on. I gave you a scripture at the head of your um, handout. And the scripture says, it's from Deuteronomy 29 and 29, you probably heard me quote it a hundred times. It says, the secret things. So there are some things that we will never know. There are some things that will never be revealed to human flesh uh, simply because some of it is too heavy for us. We would, we would never comprehend it. We would never be able to internalize it. But there are some things that are secret. Remember God says, my thoughts are not like your thoughts. My way is not like your ways. They are high above yours. There are some things that God will never reveal to us. So the scripture says the secret things belong to the Lord God. But those things that are, there's that word, revealed, belong to us and our children. So that means that God will share some things. From time to time, God will let us know on earth what's going on in heaven. Okay? Paul wrote to the church at Philippi, and I included this scripture because this is just one scripture that, where you will find the word insight. It, it doesn't show up in scripture uh, in a lot of instances, but I did, as I was studying in Philippians uh, 1 and 9, it says, uh, and this is my prayer. Paul is praying for the church at Philippi. This is what he prayed. Uh, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depths of, there's our term, in depths of insight so that you may be able 
to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless uh, for the day of Christ. So there is spiritual insight. There is revelation. Uh, in fact, if you'll think back during Jesus' public ministry, on one occasion he asked his disciples, you remember this, he said, who do men say that I am? Remember that? Who do, who do men say that I am? And they be, all of them began to respond that some say you're Elijah, some say you're John the Baptist, some say you're the prophet. Only one person had the correct response, and that was Peter. Peter said, no, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. Peter had spiritual insight. How do I know that? Because Jesus goes on to say, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for heaven and for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. So Peter got a revelation from the Lord. He had spiritual insight. He saw in Jesus what none of the other disciples could see. That's important because the Christian faith is based upon that same revelation that Peter had. How do I know that? Because Jesus said, and upon this rock, remember that? I'll be of my church. What rock? The rock of revealed knowledge. In other words, he's saying, Peter, because of what you said, if everybody else will say that, then they can become a part of the family of God. And you know that's true because in order to be a Christian, you have to have a revelation of the fact that Jesus came down from heaven. He was born of a virgin. He walked this earth for 33 and a half years. He went to the cross, suffered, bled, and died, was buried, Raised from the dead. If you believe that, if you have a revelation of that, then you become, that's, that's how you become a Christian. So, spiritual insight is very important in the life of a Christian. Why? Because it gives us hope. Uh, what I'm trying to get you to see is that No matter how difficult things are, that you're only seeing them from a physical aspect or from a natural aspect. That, in other words, there's something else, behind, something else going on behind the scenes. There's something, something else happening that you cannot see with your natural eye. You can't hear with your natural ear. You, you can't uh, perceive with your natural mind. God is always working behind the scene. Nothing is ever as it appears because everything has a purpose and everything has a meaning. L let, me, let me give you a, a, a present day example, okay? Look around you. Think about what's going on day to day. Think, think, think about what's going on when you, when you turn the TV on, what do you hear? I don't know if they still, yeah, I guess they still have newspapers. When you pick up the newspaper, what do you read? Uh, how about right now there is a public health crisis. Everybody follow me? That there's a global, there's a global pandemic. It's a, it's a health crisis. You experience it through your flesh. You, 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 you feel for the people who are, are suffering. You feel, you, 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 you sympathize 
for the families of those that have lost loved ones. The whole, whole you, 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 re, you respond to it from a natural standpoint. And to you, it's real. It is real. But there's something else going on behind the scenes. So when you look at the situation physically and naturally, you see a public health crisis. But when you look at it from with spiritual insight, you'll see health and you'll see healing and you'll see deliverance. Pretty soon you'll start hearing about people who have these miraculous healings, who are getting up from this thing, who are walking away from the hospitals. There's an economic crisis. People, millions of people have lost their jobs. I mean millions. And bless their hearts, the Congress doesn't want to help them. People will lose their homes. Uh, they will lose their automobiles, you know, uh, probably people that had kids in private school, they won't be able to send them back. They would, that's an economic crisis. You, you experience it with your natural eyes and ears. But behind the scenes, there is wealth and prosperity. The way I know that is because back in the 1920s, this country went through a Great Depression. And I'm not going to ask you if you remember that because you would be a little bit elderly. <laughs> so that was, you, you heard about it, the Great Depression. People were begging, hey, brother, can you spare a dime? Standing in soup lines. But not many days after that, along came Franklin Roosevelt with the New Deal with great ideas, and I'm just believing, and I want you to agree with me that whatever happens on November the 3rd, that whoever steps into that place will give us a new deal with new ideas, and I can see it in my mind's eye. Behind the scenes, God is putting everything in place, and I just believe that Biden will get in there He'll get some good people working, some people with good ideas, with the wisdom of God, and this whole thing is going to turn around. I'm trying to encourage somebody today because we look at things the way we see them now, but a better day is coming. you got to have some spiritual insight. You see civil unrest. You see protests. Uh, you see violence in the streets. You see looting. You see all of these things going on. And it's not for naught. It's for a purpose. These things are happening for a purpose. But right now it seems bad because people are getting injured. Some people may, may get killed. Uh, a lot of, of, of things will happen that perhaps should not have happened. But... Spiritually so, I see liberty and justice for all. Uh, my grandmama used to say, it's a poor wind that blows in the same direction all the time. It can't continue. We can't continue like this sooner or later. And we see it now. Hearts are being touched. White folks are out there with black folks marching. They, they are not just sympathetic to the cause. They see the reality of this thing, this systemic racism and all these things that have been going on. They know it's true. They know it's not a lie. And they are joining in the fight. And I just see justice and liberty in the realm of the spirit. So what I'm trying to do is encourage you to see that things are not ever as bad as they seem. We see them with our natural eye, and we respond through our flesh. The veil of our flesh keeps us from seeing into the realm of the spirit. But I'm going to show you how to get there. Now, in 2 Kings chapter 6, we officially meet 
Elijah. I talked about him a little while ago. He was the understudy to Elijah, right? And so Elijah now uh, is the prophet on the scene. He, he's the man of God. And if you study Old Testament history, you'll know that usually every king had a prophet. Or during the time of each king, there was a prophet who would come in and bring them a word from the Lord. It says in 2 Kings, and we began uh, at verse 8, that the king of Syria uh, warred against Israel and uh, took counsel with his servants, saying, in such a, in such a place uh, shall be my camp. Okay? Listen to what he said. He's about to war against, this is the king of Syria, which is obviously an enemy to Israel. And he's about to war against, a wage battle against Israel. And so he calls all of his, um, his cabinet, his, 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 his close advisors, he calls all of them in and he said, well, now we're going to go down here uh, to Smithfield and we're going to set up our camp in Smithfield and wait for them. Okay. So watch what happens. Uh, he said, in such and such a place will I set up my camp. In nine, and the man of God sent unto the king of Israel saying, what? Beware that thou passest not such a place, for thither or for there are the Syrians uh, are come. In other words, watch what happens now. Now in Nan, the man of God sends a message to the king of Israel. Don't go to Smithfield because the king of Israel is waiting down there to ambush you. Okay, watch this. Don't miss this. Something happened between I'm going to set up my camp in such and such a place and the man of God sending the message. In other words, how did the man of God know he wasn't one of the advisors? He wasn't in the bedchamber. He wasn't in the room when the king was strategizing, when he was making his plan. But in nine, he knows, the way we know he knows is because he sends a message to the king of Israel and tells him, don't go down there. So what happened? Elijah had spiritual insight. God revealed, there's that word again, gave him a revelation of what was going on, but he saw it not in the natural, he saw it in the spirit. And the way that you see in the spirit is that you have to be led by the spirit. You have to have the spirit in you. He didn't have the spirit in him, but he had the spirit upon him. In the Old Testament, these men and women of God were, um, they, they, they had the spirit of God resting upon them. He didn't live in them the way Jesus, the way the spirit of Christ lives in us. But he rested upon them and anointed them. So, he, so between what the king said and sending the message, God revealed to the man of God what he was going to do. So he tells him in verse 9, don't go, don't go down there. Because he's, he's getting ready to ambush you. Okay, so what happens in 10? And in 10, the, <coughs> excuse me, and the king of Israel sent to the place uh, which the man of God told him. Uh, let's see. And warned him all. 
and saved himself there. Not once, not twice. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria, okay, so the king of, 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 of Israel receives the word of prophecy from the man of God, and he doesn't send it. Said he, 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 he didn't go once, twice, he didn't go. So now the king of Syria is concerned. It says that he saw trouble for this thing. And he calls all of these same folk that were in the room when they were strategizing. And he says unto them, will you not show me which of us, he includes himself, which of us is for the king of Israel? In other words, there's a spy in the camp. It may be me, but I, I need to know which one of us, which one of us is telling the king of Israel everything that we're doing. I need to know who's doing that. So somebody has some insight. Mm-hmm. That's in verse 11. Therefore, no, that's, that's 11. Where am I, 12? Let's see, 12. And one of his servants said, none, my Lord. In other words, it's not any of us. We're not guilty, uh, my king, oh, oh, my, my Lord, oh, king. But it's, it's that Elijah. It's the prophet uh, that is in Israel. He's telling the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. In other words, look around. Do you see him? He, he not in, he not in here, but he knows what's going on. How does he know? He knows by spiritual insight. He knows by the spirit what's going on in the king's bedroom. Okay? Uh, let me see. What verse is it? And he said, go, am I right now? Let's see. Yeah. Go, and he said, go and spy where, is, where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, behold, where is he? He's down in Dothan. Go down there and get him. Go down there and get him. He's, he's, in other words, we want to know where he is. Somebody said, we know where he is. He's down there in Dothan. Okay, and so in 14, uh, therefore sent he thither or there horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by, when did it come? By night, and they compassed the city about. In other words, overnight, the king of Syria sends these troops, he sends a whole platoon of, 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 of horses, of, of soldiers on horses with chariots, and they compass or they encamp about or they encircle the whole city so that it's no way humanly possible for Elijah and his servants to get out, okay? Now, that was 14, mm -hmm. and where, okay, and when, he, and when the servant of, of the man of God, in other words, when Elijah's servant was risen, he got up early, and he went out to take a look. Behold, a host compassed the city uh, with, with, with horses, chariots. And his servants said unto him, he's talking to Elijah, he's talking to his master. He says, alas, my master, how shall we do? In other words, how in the heck are we going to get out of here? We, 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 we're hemmed in. It, it, it's no way out. And... Let's see. 
And when, let me see, let me see, what verse am I? Six, okay, I'm gone, I've gone down to 18. You see, I'm at 16? Okay, let me find 16. And he answered, okay, Elijah's going to calm him down now. In other words, his faith has got to kick in because Elijah's getting ready to perform a miracle. In other words, God is going to perform a miracle at the word of Elisha. So he has to calm him down because he's fearful, and the faith can't kick in, right, unless uh, you get rid of the fear. He says to him, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Okay? All right, look around. I look out here and I see the whole city, the whole mountain covered with horses and chariots and soldiers. But you say it more on our side than it is on their side, okay? For, uh, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Then Elijah prayed because the servant is responding to what he sees through his flesh, and wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. you, you you're scared because you see the enemy and it's more of them than it is of you and you know it's no way possible that you can get out of this situation. You can't see a way out. You don't hear anything. You can't perceive in your mind how you're going to get out of this situation. So the, the, the servant needs help. And Elijah prays for the servant. He says, Elijah prayed and said, I pray thee, talking to the Lord now, Open his eyes that he may see. And what happened? And the Lord, Elijah didn't do it. The Lord, what did the Lord do? Open his eyes, open the eyes of the young man. And then when he looked out, he saw, behold, the mountain full of horses and chariots. Chariots of fire. Round about, round about Elijah. And when they came down to him, Elijah prayed again uh, unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. So he, he prayed, and God opened the servant's eyes and gave him spiritual insight. He could see that in spite of what was happening on the ground, what was happening in the earth, that God was prepared in the realm of the spirit to take them all out. So the whole, the whole gist of what I'm trying to get you to see today is that when you look out, and I know that these are, are, are particularly troublesome times, and I know when you look out and you see so much going on, I want you to be able to pray and ask God to help you to see what's going on in the spirit. Because we are the people of God. He is not going to let us go down in defeat. If we believe that, if we have the, have the faith and we have the confidence in God, we'll, we'll believe that no weapon that is formed against us, and, 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 the, and the pandemic is a weapon. It is a weapon. It's destroying lives in the hundreds of thousands. But you've got to know that God, that, that God has a, a, a meaning for all of this. He has a purpose for all of this, and he's going to protect his people. And you, you have got to see that it's, it's not as it appears. Yes, yes, what you see is real. 
It's real in the realm of the spirit, but in the, in the real in the realm of, of the natural, but in the spirit, God is working a work. He's getting a tyrant out of the office of president. He is. He, that, listen, this man can fix, before he got in the office, he could fix everything. You know it. You heard the speeches. He was going to fix infrastructure. He was going to fix immigration. He was going to fix um, health care. They were going to have a better health care than, than the, the Affordable Care Act. He was going to fix everything. And according to him, if you listen to him, he's already fixed it. He's already built the wall. And the reality is, if you go back and read and do research, he has only built three miles of wall. All of the other wall that was built was built was oh, the bit walls built under Obama's administration that was damaged. And, and they rebuilt it, so he said they built. But in actuality, he's only built three miles of wall. But according to him, he's built the wall. He's kept the immigrants out. He's taken care of infrastructure. He's taken care of health care. He's taken care of, it. according to him, he can fix everything. Oh, he's the best economy in the world. Nobody ever, nobody ever had an economy like his economy. Where did he get it? Where did he get it from Obama? All this stuff is, 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 is the aftermath of even the road. When you ride those freeways out there, that not, he hadn't, they hadn't appropriated a penny in infrastructure. When you get on the freeway, that, that's Obama's money. <laughs> but he said, let, the, what I'm trying to get you to say, he said he could fix everything. Can he fix, can he fix the, can he fix the virus? Can he fix it? He, God knows. It's no, he doesn't, he, 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 he's so confused that he goes out and play golf. He don't even try to, he don't even try to strategize. He doesn't even meet with the health care officials. He doesn't do, he, with the, the, the health experts. Because he does not know what to do. God is going to use this thing that has been so deadly and so painful for so many to turn the nation around. But you've got to see it in the spirit. You've got to see what God is doing in the spirit. Not what he's, what was going on with your natural eye. And this economy, yes, I know you're out of work. I know you, 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 can, you probably can't make ends meet. But hold on. Hold on. It's going to get better. You're going in, 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 in just a few sh months, years, I tell you what, find some of these people that came to, to, to Birmingham and other cities from New Orleans when Katrina hit. Find some of them and hear their testimony. The, 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 Katrina ran them out of New Orleans, but it, it, but it ushered them into places where they are now living better than they ever lived. So I want you to be encouraged and know that it's going to get better in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of economic crisis, in the midst of, of everything that's going on, God has a plan, God has a purpose, God is moving by his spirit. If you just keep the faith, if you just hold on, God will bring you out and he'll bring you out all right. I know he will. Why do I know? Because I can see in my mind's eye, I can see in the realm of the spirit what God is doing. And we are weeping sometimes, but God is smiling. Because he has a plan, and he's working it out. He's working it together for our good. And so I want you to be encouraged. I want you to pray. I want you to pray fervently that God will give you spiritual insight, that he will show you by his spirit what he's doing. 
and that you won't be in fear and, and you won't be confused and you won't get depressed. You won't lose hope. It's a better day. It's a better day coming. Hold on, saints of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for what you've revealed to us today. God, we pray especially for those that are going through right now. We pray that you will uplift their spirits. We pray that we've said something, oh God, that will help them to hold on to what you're doing right now. You're working it out for those who have no job. You're working it out for those who may be facing eviction. You're working it out for perhaps those who are uh, suffering with this virus or symptoms of the virus or going through in a, in a, in a serious way. God, we know because we've seen you do it so many times. So many times you've blessed us. So many times you, you've come in and you, you've been uh, a doctor in our sick room. You, you, you've been all that we had need of. I pray for every member of this congregation in particular. And all of you know who you are, the ones that have gone through and who are going through right now. Every name, every number, God touched them right now at the point of their need. Heal sick bodies. Transform confused minds. Move by your spirit. Help them, oh God, to be encouraged, to be uplifted, to be inspired, to be enlightened, to know that without you, they can do nothing. But with you, all things are possible. Now breathe on the pastor of this congregation today, oh God. Touch him in a special way. God, the heaviness that he's experiencing right now, the things that he must do, the decisions that he must make, you know how to guide him. You know how to give him the wisdom that he needs. Give him the wisdom, God. Help him, encourage him. Give him the strength to do those things that are needful. We pray for all of our family, all of our members. We pray for the world at large because the whole world is in your hands. The world needs you now more than ever before. We believe that you are able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we may ever ask or think. And it's according to the power that worketh in us. And in this power, we pray that you will move right now by your spirit. Praise God. Thank you, God. We appreciate you. We give you honor, glory, and praise in Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. Thank God. I hope that you've been encouraged. I hope that God touched you during our prayer time. If you have a need, just, just email us and let us know, and we'll be, we'll be praying for you and holding you up. We know that a lot of you are going through some tumultuous times, and please know that we care about you, and we care what you're going through, and we're reaching out to you to be here, to be of assistance to you during these crucial times. So we look forward to our coming together again on Sunday morning for our regular morning worship service. Don't forget to tune in. I think it will be the first Sunday, so I'm sure we probably have our communion service and uh, we'll see you back here on next Wednesday for our midweek Bible study. Stay safe and keep the faith. <laughs>